I am Austin. Um, I am cur currently the curator of Toads at Josh's Frogs. Um, but I have experience with all types of frogs um, and some salamanders. Um, but we have a pretty good collection of toads currently. Um, and I also do a lot of the special projects um, when it comes to aquatic systems uh, and tadpole rearing. That's kind of a really basic overview of what I do here. Aaron, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, how's it going, guys? Uh, give me one second. I'm just getting my system here set up. Sorry for like the poor lighting. That's one of the things I was trying to work on, but I think that might be the best that I can do. Hopefully it looks clear enough for you guys. Okay, so yeah, uh, my name's Aaron Capoli. I'm excited to see all you guys here. Um, I'm looking forward to the discussion we're gonna have. Um, I'm a UPJ Pitt Johnstown student and I'm pursuing uh, herpetology but I'm also looking at the avenue of like filmmaking and stuff like that as well. Um, just because I really enjoy uh, studying amphibians, but I also enjoy documenting them. So those are two really big passions of mine. And I'm uh, actually working towards getting two master's degrees, one in each of those fields. Um, so that's really the most important thing about me. And I'm also the owner and the main person that posts on PA Woods and Forests YouTube channel and all the other stuff. Um, so I'm a Pennsylvania native. That's where I got the name PA Woods and Forests. And um, I really focus on pretty much most, most of the frogs and toads from the Northeast. So those are the most important things. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. And thank you to everyone that's joining. So you guys honestly can get right into it. And Aaron, I know um, this is kind of your thing. So you can go ahead and take over if you'd like. And Austin, feel free to chime in whenever too. All right. I remember you. Uh, I don't know if you remember <laughs> me when I was in. I came up to Michigan. I saw you guys. That was a fun I, trip. <laughs> I do. You. I think you were um, in on our, one of our Pizza Wednesdays. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I clean house too, but, um, <laughs> you know, what's funny. Uh, I look out my window, maybe it's not funny, but when we were like driving up there to see you guys, it was a huge snowstorm and it took like hours just to get to the hotel we were staying at. Um, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but in Pennsylvania, especially like the Western part, we're getting hammered by a huge snowstorm right now. And yeah, just, I saw that just reminded me of like that day when we were up there with you guys. <laughs> um, but I really wanted to talk to you, I guess we could start with about Josh's Frogs because as people have seen throughout the videos, uh, Josh's Frogs is you know one of the first things they see when they click on a video for Frog Week. Uh, you guys have done a lot of sponsoring and supporting of different conservation projects and I'm not sure of all that uh, you're aware of about it, but maybe you could just speak to everybody who's here about the uh, the projects you guys support and why you guys think it's important. Yep. So uh, one of the ones that we have been doing uh, for the longest is we uh, we breed mantellas, so the poison dart frogs of Madagascar. Um, every mantella that is sold at Josh's Frogs, we uh, send five dollars to um, an organization called Mitsinju in Madagascar. Uh, and they work on in situ uh, conservation programs with mantellas. Um, and so uh, we're really excited about the productions that we've had and some strides that we've made with tadpole care in the last uh, six months. Um, and we, I, we've had, we have more mantellas um, out of the water right now than we've had, I think, since I started, um, which was almost eight years ago now. Um, so that's one of the, um, Kind of like our tried and true conservation ones. Um, last year we started a grant program um, where we um, basically had people um, send in and uh, apply for grants that we uh, were offering um, and we sponsored 
I believe four. Uh, let me see if I can remember. There's um, one called Riva, um, and then there was Evac. There was one in Uganda, and then another in um, in the states that was dealing with salamander migrations. Um, and I I think the uh, Evac one might have just been for a generic. Um, some of those pods that they do, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, the one in Uganda was really, really cool. And I think everyone that had a to hand in um, deciding um, where we were gonna try to allocate the, the grants to, um, everyone kind of had that one on their radar um, just because um, with the amount of money that we were offering, it didn't feel like a, a lot, but we were, they were just super appreciative of getting it and able to do quite a bit um, in their education program out there um, with uh, some of their native stuff. So it was really cool. Yeah, I think that a lot of times people that are, um, you know, trying to get their projects out there, even if it's a little bit of help, it goes a long way, like something like this, where, you know, it's not necessarily like, I needed a grant to go out and like, you know, take pictures of frogs and toads and make a story behind it, but just getting uh, the story out there of, uh, you know, the education behind it, what is in our woods and our forests, why is it important? And then, you know, what, why should, what, what should we feel about it? I mean, that's really the whole thing of Frog Week is uh, I try to create a story of like why these frogs and toads and other creatures that show up are so important. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, conservation projects are huge and, Sometimes, you know, it doesn't really take a whole lot to get them off the ground or to, you know, to get people inspired. I think one of the most important things that people overlook is uh, regardless of how many people are there, like whoever is here for this or whoever sees the videos, all it takes is like one person to want to get into the game. And let's say they put, you know, they donate the most amount of money or they become the world's next like Steve Irwin. You know, you never know who's watching your videos. I know. Um, where I work and other places, there's a lot of kids that we're watching and uh, there's not a whole lot of content with respect to like people going out and adventuring on YouTube. So when kids are seeing this, it's really exciting them because there's not a whole lot of people doing it anymore, like that, you know, they know about. So I think that it's really cool.